Welcome to WHM Mailbag, everybody. I'm Andrew Jupiter alongside what turned out to be the whole gang. Finally! Whoa. Eric Siska, yeah. Stephen Sadak, yeah. Christopher Cabin. We are here he to read some me, letters. What? You pointed at me first because I'm first mate of the gang. <laughs> oh, wow, we're ranking each other now? <laughs> That's right. No, dude, you're just going to be the first one I kill. <laughs> That's fine. I'm the rook, dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. You're going down, rook. What's great about the rook is it can move almost anywhere on the board. It's got a really good... Not yeah, like no, anywhere. It's, it's not the queen. It's got good power. Dude. It's good got power good, moves. Yeah, it's Very all straight power. lines, though, mm -hmm. man. Yeah. Bishop is like, oh, man, do I got to fucking solve a math problem to move this guy or what? <laughs> Diagonals? <laughs> Christ. <laughs> As it's you can uh, tell, chess is in our game. You know, yeah, knights was, are the worst because it's like. Dun, dun, dun. Oh yeah, it's like I got to. <laughs> <it. laughs> wait, 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 I'm sorry. What is it like? Dun, dun, dun. Oh god. By it. the yeah, way, like, like rin, rin, rin. <laughs> listen to this later. It's on YouTube. You can see me go. Dun, dun, dun. And it's like, yeah. Oh wow, the queen. You know, she can't do the knight's move. Good. I don't need it. I don't. That's enough. Yeah, that's yes. enough with the yeah, L it's chain. Always so, it's always so. It was always so weird to me with chess because it was always just like. <laughs> Yeah, a, queen, a woman can't move like that. <laughs> what you know, are you saying? You know what was weird for chess for me? What's that? Uh, what's that? Is that I the, didn't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> and the guy, oh, well, that's not weird at all. I, I, got a, I got a game for you, Chris. Stratego. <laughs> I'm way into Stratego. Really? I thought you were going to say checkers. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought, too. Chris just thought that uh, chess was black and white checkers. <laughs> Stratego. No, that's Othello. Excuse me. <laughs> Wait, what the hell is Stratego? It's like risk for idiots. Yes, exactly. It's like, <laughs> it's like it's like one on it's one on one risk, and uh -huh. it doesn't take five hours, basically. And it's like you got like uh -huh. these little un Are they like it's like uh, Napoleonic looking outfits? Yes. Yeah, and yeah, it's no. just like. He's hiding in the bushes. Well, it's basically like, yeah, you don't know what anybody else has. You try to attack somebody, and then uh -huh. the highest number wins. So wait, thing. was that the one we played in the bar that one time, or was it Risk? I think it was, no, it was Risk. Okay. Yes. So I played the smart one. We had, like, some epic Risk games in college. Yeah, man. Days on end. Love Risk. Like Newman and Kramer trying to take we'll on the do, subway. Maybe we'll do a live stream of a Risk game. Because Risk goes on for a while, That's and you could really start talking shit. I'll tell you this, gang. I would like We that. are seriously trying to figure out a board game podcast situation mm. send us your Rex. yeah what would you like to see I, us play live i do have risk i have risk as well Ooh. and i'm at risk constantly <laughs> for all sorts of things well this is a mailbag <laughs> episode uh that's right uh, so we have some letters we're gonna read them really really yeah. quickly uh or you know at your leisure whatever you yeah. prefer okay, steve cool. sure uh, uh so steve will start us off here as always uh you know, your at-risk joke made me cough. Uh, <laughs> my super story. Hi, WHM gang. Uh, your episode of The Super reminded me of my previous super, who is basically a female Joe Pesci. One now, gross. Uh, and now The Super is one of those episodes of movies that you probably haven't seen. Yeah. And I want to say you can always, what is like, what the fuck is this movie? I can't even find it. Then just listen to the episode. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's it's what I refer to here on the show as a slips through the cracks episode because uh -huh. nobody gives a fuck about that movie. But I will say, I'm particularly proud of that episode. So if you are a lot of fun riffs, yeah. saving it until you can find a fucking you know Salvation oh. Army VHS of that movie. <laughs> Don't waste your time. Just also, listen. Also, the super is for rent. You can rent it. <laughs> not right, you know, it was, it's not it's like right. vibes where it, you actually have to do a hunt to go and find this movie. <laughs> mm. The super is on Amazon. Yeah, oh, just, just, nice. just 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 letting you know. Um, uh, so I moved into my first apartment with, th with uh, three of my friends in a bad part of town. Oh, oh no, dude, it's you're the gonna Zodiac. Now who's at risk, dude? You're gonna <laughs> fucking you are gonna kill yourself. Oh shit, it's the Zodiac. This is why you need to be watching us on YouTube because yeah, that's you could terrible. watch someone die <laughs> on camera. Uh, it's just these these antics you don't see when you normally <laughs> listen to the show. Oh, oh. Ba -ba -ba. take away your uh, murder mask. So I moved to my first apartment with three of my. Friends in a bad part of town. That's like the start of a Springsteen song, by the way. Bad part of town. Moving in with three of my factory friends. Uh, I could do actually the next line in Springsteen. Oh, please. We had a flower shop that was always out of flowers. A coffee shop with a back room had that had more clients than the actual shop and the bar that managed to burn down three times in a span this of a year. This is late Springsteen, wow. I guess. <laughs> 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 Dude, you could sell out the garden. <laughs> uh, Take that to old Broadway, dude. Uh, despite that, uh, despite all that, our landlord is a pretty sweet old lady. A pretty sweet lady. Uh, I added old for no reason. I thought she was Joe Pesci. <laughs> female Joe Pesci. She, would, she okay. was a female Joe Pesci. <laughs> she was two feet tall and looked like a troll. <laughs> 
Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh-huh. Joe Pesci looks like a troll. Uh, <laughs> she would always get back to us fairly quickly if something came up and manage to stay mostly out of our hair. Um, about two years into renting the place, I hear this loud. I heard a loud police knock at the door. Oh shit! The kind of the kind of knock that tells you you better answer the door in the next five seconds, or I will knock it down. Fuck cop knock. I come to answer it with one of my with uh, one of my roommates, and uh, who do I see but a fifty year old lady accompanied with a six foot five gentleman staring daggers at me. Eep. She tells me that the she tells us that the building was under new management and that she was the new super and that she was here to collect the rent. She doesn't introduce the large man standing behind her and he just keeps glaring at me. Give me the rent. Give me the rent. <laughs> there uh, was a new old lady <laughs> in town. He had a six foot five guy next to her. She was could have been someone in the NBA. <laughs> Uh, I'm obviously very confused. I never, uh, and I was never informed of any new management or anyone coming over with heavy backup to collect rent. Backup. So I calmly explain that, like we did for the two years prior, our rent would be sent directly to the owner of this building on time, and even I- I- uh, o- and even offer her to pay cash directly for a discount. Or. I- uh, even if what is happening offer. here? Or even if her offer to pay? Oh, I see. see, see. Okay. Oh, she was like, give me a little less I than see. the rent. Oh, if you give it to me, like just in cash. Yeah, our, this our is rent a scam. Right? Here, yep. now I got it. Our rent will be sent directly to the owner of this building on time. And even if her offer to pay her in cash directly for a discount seems tempting, we will keep using direct transfers. So there's no more need for her to come back on the first day of every month. She seems pretty displeased with this. Well, because she's a criminal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like I said, <laughs> we always paid our rent on time, so we had she had no leg to stand on. And she literally didn't. She just had two little wooden pirate legs. That was <laughs> and rollers just, in the hair, too, you know. Just like Joe Pesci. Uh, I thought that the, that was the end of it, but before she leaves, she takes a quick look at our place and notices my roommate's summer tires that he had left inside before placing them into storage, and she says, by the way, you can't keep tires here. They are highly flammable, and my sister burned to death <laughs> when I was eight. And I would take that. Oh shit! My sister burned it. I'm going to do this uh, as she did. My sister burned to death when I was eight, and I would hate to see the le- the same thing happen to you. Oh shit, dude! Uh, now I know Creepy. it's total bullshit. Tires are rubber, literally one of the least flammable materials on earth. And I mean, why would tires be even? Why would tires even be flammable? Would you put them on your car if you knew they would catch fire the minute a spark touches or there's a heat fa- wave? That makes no sense. Mm. I just nodded and sent her on her way. Once your deal was over with, uh, my roommate turns to me and says, did, did that little old lady just set, threaten to set the building on fire? <laughs> we both nervously laugh and called the landlord to make sure I wasn't just some woman trying to scam us out of our rent money. Turns out she was actually telling the truth. I know. What? Shocker. Flash forward a few weeks later, my semester is over. And, and the like, house burned down. Hold on a down. second. She was saying tires were flammable. <laughs> that was true. <laughs> and you gotta, the landlord knows that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> flash forward a few weeks later, my semester is over, and I decided to treat myself to a nice home-cooked steak uh, with homemade fries and some steamed vegetables. Wow. Uh, it takes about an hour uh, to prepare the whole thing, and before I can have my first bite, I hear another police knock at the door. Only this time, it's my super and her bodyguard. It's not, it's not. It's not my super and her bodyguard, but it's actually five firemen. Apparently One, there's been two, a, three, four, five. Apparently, there's been a <laughs> gas leak, and the oh. building needs to be evacuated immediately. There are tires in here! <laughs> Get down! <laughs> it's uh, like the end of Backdraft. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big wall of tires! The tire! You see, like, the... The fire dancing on the tire. <laughs> Carousel, no! Uh, one time, uh, I was living at home. Uh, I was in my early 20s, and just me and my brother in the house, and I was taking a shower, and he's, he runs into the bathroom. like, Steve, there's a gas leak! And I'm like, yeah, I'm taking a shower. I'll be out in a minute. And he's like, but there's a gas leak. We have to get out of the house right now. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah I got work in 10 minutes. <laughs> so I, I kind of like jauntily just kind of got my shit together. Yeah. And like when I come out, all the animals in the house are locked up and on the stoop. And he's like, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Look, we're fine. And I just, I, I took a cab to work. But yeah, yeah was, you were wow. high as shit. But yeah. <laughs> no, you got I was those. <laughs> Mostly so. He, he couldn't read for four days. <laughs> that was just normal. Uh, I looked at the thing thinking, oh my God, she did it. 
Uh, she made good on her threat. She's going to kill us. They barely give me time to grab my coat, and me and my roommates and the whole uh, complex proceeds to, to wait two hours uh, outside during the worst Canadian winter, Ugh. barely clothed for the situation, barely clothed for the situation to get resolved. Turns out she wasn't the culprit, just the general incompetence uh, and... Just it, just her general incompetence, and she went on to creep us out for many all months, many more months, until we all quickly moved out. Wow! I still see my previous roommates often, and our remember that time we taught our we thought our super tried to murder us uh, is one of our favorite uh, memories that took place right after. Remember the time she didn't fix the main entrance lock for months, so homeless people started sleeping in our hallways. Uh, anyway, that was my the super story. I know you already talked about it during the podcast, but do you have any more horrible apartment stories? I love those. Thanks, uh, your fan from Montreal, Antoine. Uh, yeah, I do. Oh, in uh, our I don't know if I've ever told the story on the air. In our old apartment in Astoria, um, we were like already getting ready to to leave the apartment, um, and they had been doing construction in the building. Mm. And, like, every time someone, like, vacated an apartment, they just gutted the fucking thing. And they were, like, doing full reno and then, like, jacking the rent prices. So we were, like, one of the last holdouts to move out. And so it was, like, a ghost town in the building. And, like, the fucking construction guys were acting like no one lived there. They were, like, leaving garbage in the hallway. They were fucking smoking, like, inside. It was awful. So... A lot of the time that we lived in that apartment, there was like a ceiling leak in the bathroom and the super would always come and like fucking, you know, patch it up and whatever. And, and be on drink his way. from the leak. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It made him stronger. Uh, so one day I'm working from home and I'm about to take a shower and they had been renovating the place upstairs about to get in the shower and phone rings. It was someone from work and I was like, all right, well, I rarely get a call from work. So this mm. is probably a big deal. Let me take the call. I take the call, and like 30 seconds into this phone call, I hear this huge crashing sound, and I fucking go in the bathroom, and the entire ceiling had caved in, <laughs> right, and fallen all into the fucking bathtub. And if it wasn't for this coworker calling me, like, I would have had my neck broken. Shit. Like, you, really? Like, yeah. Like, dead? Yeah. Like, wow. tons of, like, just ceiling and shit in between all just, like, fell into our bathtub Yeesh. and i look up and this construction dude is looking down and he just goes <laughs> he would have saw you naked well yeah dead naked too <laughs> and he just goes sorry <laughs> and i fucking lost wow. my mind yeah and like final went destination up there. ever since dude yeah i've been dodging the reaper man <laughs> left and right fucking tony todd it turned into this whole thing the fucking building manager came and i was fucking screaming at this guy and like i've gotten like into it with people before, sure. but nothing like this. Yeah. I was fucking screaming at this guy, and he was like, "We're gonna do everything we can. They're gonna patch it up right now. Yeah. It'll be done today." Blah blah blah. You know, and you know, I hope that uh, you know. There's, I forget what he said, but he extended his hand, uh -huh. and oh, I shit. fucking turned around. I turned my back to him and <laughs> stared out the window until he left. Wow. Years later, I come to find out there's a story in the in the Times about. Fucking a certain uh, son-in-law <laughs> getting fucking sued to ribbons hey, buddy. about fucking yeah it was Paulie Shore <laughs> about like uh, uh, like crooked fucking renovation fraud yeah. and whatever it's fucking it's the Kush yeah. it's Jared Kushner and I fucking there's a picture in the Times and I'm like huh. He almost killed you. Jared Kushner almost that killed you. That fucking like uh, 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 awning looks very familiar, and I fucking zoomed in. Sure as shit, that fucking piece of trash owned that building and was lowballing it with renovations and blah blah blah. That sounds all correct. So like, fuck that guy from here to kingdom come. But yeah, so that's my fucking shit ass uh, apartment. Just slightly jollier one. <laughs> Uh, Jolly's wh good. When I first moved here, I lived in uh, Williamsburg with some of our friends from Purchase, um, and it was still. In this was like uh, it was a studio, but we had it like blocked off to be separate bedrooms. You built those walls. The built bedrooms the walls. had no ceilings. Um, but like the outside, when you got in the hallway, it was all drywall. Still, it was yeah. like being. It was like trying to sleep 
in the middle of a Saturday Night Live set. Yes. Because, like, yeah. you know, it was just like. <laughs> That's accurate. It, it, it didn't actually. It, nothing was real. Like, right. yes, there were rooms, but they didn't, they didn't complete. You could, those See, walls like, were just flats. Yeah. You could just imagine a, ca- a camera and a crane coming down <laughs> yeah. into the room. Uh, I want to thank Stephen Baldwin for stopping by. <laughs> Woo! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. REM. <laughs> Andy Sandberg was great, huh? Um, <laughs> no, so one of these nights, I don't know if this just came to become a, a, like a, a thing amongst the group of friends. Mm-hmm. But one night we're all heading out, and there is a drawing of some random person with the... Um, Named Doctor Poop Shadow. Dark Doctor Poop Shadow. Oh, of course. And this became like Wait, I'm just now finding out that's where it's from. Yes, yeah. yeah. I've heard Poop Shadow for years. Yep. Yes. yes. Did you know the dark origin? Please? Oh yeah. I think it was uh, uh, off guest uh, Justin J. Case who originally really like <laughs> glommed onto this. Like, what? Poop shadow, <laughs> <laughs> and just somehow this turned into the thing that we referenced when we had to take a shit. Well, all right, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll step in oh, here please, for a second. Please. Yeah, it's a clarifying in joke. It's because you get shadowed, right? Is, we made a verb out of it. Yeah, it's basically don't uh, use this by the way. No, you should. It, it's too late. <laughs> um, if you're in a position where you're not exactly ready to go to the bathroom, and you do the hop, yep, and you got to run, and you know time yeah. is running quickly. That is, you get shadowed by Doctor Poop Shadow. Right, yeah. that's he when this, he uses his this super fictitious power. villain. Yeah, right. that you I know. should have. I should have asked the Marvel expert to really go into it. <laughs> yeah. really be able to break it down. Well, you're giving the origin story right. You know, mm-hmm. legend has it he would only be taken down by Sir Poop Juice. <laughs> <laughs> so I was taking it. I was smoking a J while while in uh, Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and then I just started doing graffiti. Doctor Poop Shadow. Hey. <laughs> Oh man! I got a quick apartment story. Oh please, do it. When we, I, I moved out of New York City, I live just outside of it now, and I commute down. But when we were moving out, I uh, we took we were moving. It was like the last truckload of shit. Oh yeah. And I, I was like, okay, so I got these two bags of just garbage mm-hmm. to take out, throw it out, you know, a lot, But then we'll be on our way. And the super of the building insisted that my movers take. The bags of garbage onto the moving truck. What? And I didn't find out about this until I moved them into my fucking new <laughs> place. Yeah. So I just had like two bags of garbage from Queens. Dude, you should have driven back and fucking left them in front of the building. Well, you know, so tempted. He didn't want to lift it up because he ain't no Hercules. I ain't no Hercules. I'm not picking up all these garbage bags. To get that joke, download that super episode. Uh, all right, Chris Cabin. Okay. Getting pissed at movies. Uh, dear WHM, I've been a loyal listener since my dad sent me down uh, the podcast wormhole in 2013. You get down there, god damn it! <laughs> Do you uh, think this thing isn't loaded? <laughs> get down the wormhole. Wow. I am just shocked. Being recommended this show by your dad? Yeah, yeah. totally. How old's your dad? Is he our age? Probably. <laughs> well, that could be. Uh, your show always makes my day and cackle by myself like a crazy person. Uh, I'm pretty chill when it comes to movies, even the bad ones. That's cool. If it's bad or horrible, I'll just m- move on or joke about how bad it is until recently. My fiance and I were just relaxing watching a movie one night. She was halfway through it. I just walked in and settled down. Called The Prodigy from 2019. Steve, did you actually see this? No, I didn't. It's Twisted on my list. I really starter. want to see this. I'm always I'm a sucker for a haunted kid movie. Oh, it's wait, totally wait, oh, it's this him. okay. Yeah, it's not good. The this kid, came and went. Hold on a second. The kids are haunted. The, the kid, kid is haunted. Like yeah. there's a ghost inside of the kid. Yeah, totally. Really big fan of those. So movies. don't go in that kid. <laughs> uh, noted. <laughs> the call is coming from inside the, <laughs> the kid. kid. He ate my cell phone. Sorry. A uh, slight spoiler for the movie. It turns out the evil kid is actually a serial killer reincarnated into oh. this kid as he was born. I'm BTW, that's not a slight spoiler. That's the fucking whole <laughs> turn there, buddy. The whole entire movie. <laughs> for a movie everybody cares about. Yeah, we, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> it's like Chucky, yeah. but with a real life boy. <laughs> it actually is. About, I, I, yeah. I've seen you it. That's, it? Yeah, you I saw, saw it? it. I did see it. And that's about what it Does is. Does he go, <laughs> You Not really. God. It's kind of weirder than that. Does he? Yes. Push okay. this forward a bit. They can't see your beautiful face. Oh, there we go. Uh oh, beer no, face. No other way. Pull it towards you. Oh, there we go. Yeah. What if we all did beer face? <laughs> <laughs> it's me, beer face. You Send me free push beer. Forward. Yeah, there you go. There. Oh, now you got a better angle. Okay, yeah, yeah. Poop oh, shadows. I just want to be able to see Steve face. as much as possible. Can you hear me though? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's 
Yeah. No, you kind of made it. Now you're good. Are you okay? Yeah. yeah but good. it's kind of far away from you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just how's trying to get premium Steve. Dude. No, how's, you, how's your <laughs> chair? So you got to go to the YouTube channel to get premium Steve. It's premium got, Steve. It's coming right up after. You're getting premium. Yeah, I mean, Steve. Uh, you could listen to this, this for free, but for premium Steve, it's three ninety nine a month, <laughs> and that gets you access. Uh, to top tier videos, <laughs> custom videos. You know what I'm talking about. Do you remember Camboy pre- solo play? <laughs> Steve's a camboy now. Do you remember it was on like Comedy Central Premium Blend where they would oh, sure. it would be like remix of comedy sets. It was just like, hey, we've got fucking 29 hours of stand up comedy. How yeah. do we cut it up? And how do we repackage it for you? Yep, and it doesn't matter. They can be in different venues. It yep. can be different decades. Nobody gave a flying. Fuck producing premium blend. You can't hear me though. What's that? You can hear me coming out. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. I did. There. Right. Got that. Just right. be sure to open your mouth. Uh, the voice is coming from inside the kid. The <laughs> minute I heard this, I became livid. <laughs> <laughs> My suspension of disbelief refused to believe this, and I would hear anything else. I, I wouldn't hear anything else this piece of garbage told me. Your Are you fiance? referring to the wife? Yeah. yeah. No, uh, I guess the movie. Yeah. Um. My fiance found amusement in my anger. Well, good for her. Uh, which, to her credits, uh, seemed a bit irrational. I normally don't get heated like this. The only time, only other time I can think of is when my dad came and told me about Thanos at the end of Avengers. Uh, wow. <laughs> so wait, is, do they have a, a, a vice versa thing going on here? <laughs> the dad is telling that him is about good. this podcast and fucking Avengers Affinity yes. War. And the kid is just pissed off at home. The last no, it's the Thanos fucking stinger is what they're referring oh, to. Oh, that's what they're. Oh, yeah. Still, but, but remember? Still, like the last yeah. movie my dad literally ever talked to me about yep. was Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> wow. And then the sure. weekend it came out. Yeah, in 1998. Yeah, and then uh-huh. after that, it's the just, shutters closed. <laughs> that's the end of movies. Movies have finished. Wow. And we don't watch new movies. We watch that movie. The be all end all. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, you don't show him like other war movies, I don't, or he just I don't, refuses. I, don't sh- I, I hardly show him my face, Chris. <laughs> well, <fair. laughs> no, I do. I do. Fair We're all fine. fine. He's a. He's, it's good. <laughs> Thanos at the end of Avengers, and I looked at him dead face and said, "No." Any case, do you remember the first time you became upset or angry at a movie or something? It's done. Thanks for all the laughs, Jeffrey. Oh, good question. The first time, my first time. Uh, <laughs> No, although I remember the realization I had when I was seeing Don't Mess with the Zoltan in theaters. Uh-huh. I got mad at myself. Is that Be- a big remake? I think it's Zohan. It's Zohan. Oh, Zo- oh Zoltan. <laughs> yeah. Zoltan is the uh, the, the fortune-telling robot in Big, right? Yeah, that's yeah. why he just asked yeah. if it was a big remake. He was making oh, fun of me. I thought he meant like as in like a big... Wow, oh, look at that budget. No, yeah. Look at that budget. Don't mess with the Zohan. And around the time he was beating up a person with his feet, I got so mad at myself. I was like, you could be doing anything right now. <laughs> you could be home sleeping. You could be trying heroin for the first time. <laughs> Here you are watching Don't Mess with the Zohan. And I get so furious, I just fucking up and left. That I left right. the theater. Mm. I mean, I get angry at movies quite a bit. Uh, hence, well, all of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you're you're always pissed off whenever we do the show. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like a, a, a notable one that I haven't mentioned on the show, but somebody else take my. my I mean, here. I walked out of Mortal Kombat Annihilation. I think I mentioned that on our Mortal Kombat Annihilation <laughs> episode. Couldn't walk out of the show though. <laughs> yeah, I got really pissed off recently with Vox Lux. I was like, "You think you're so fucking smart? Yeah. Fuck you! Fuck everything about that you movie." I really like that movie a lot. Now it's up to you. Really like it? Yeah, dude. At first it was like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. No, now mean, it's now I really like it. Yeah. You're just you're just mad because you're not smart enough to understand. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know you're probably right. <laughs> it's but you know what? Is... Maybe someday I will figure out how to understand how cool mass shootings are. I, Fuck you. I feel like that part didn't need to be a part of that movie. But I which kinda... of the three mass shootings you have to watch in that movie? There's a more. Is there more than just the star? There's, there's two. Well, there's. One that you watch twice, one uh, as it happens, and second. then one POV <laughs> fucking badass. Fuck you. Is, it's still better than A Star is Born. Yes. Is, thank now, you. is there a mass shooting at the end of the credits? <laughs> <laughs> Sticker scene. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, 
Oh. I mean, I got I got pretty fucking no. You know, Birdman oh. pissed me off. There yeah. you go. Yeah, like, you were just was, bitching about that the other day. Yeah, it's just every time I think of it, because I'm a huge Raymond Carver fan, and I, it was this. And thing. Was he the Birdman in real life? <laughs> well, no, that's what that's what they're adapting. Uh, what are we talking? He what wrote talking? the Birdman. <laughs> no, he did right. not. He wrote. He's uh, the Birdman writer. What we talk about, we talk. What we talk Harvey about love. Birdman. And it was like, oh, it's like based on that. That's the play, and then like I like the whole cast, and I was like, this movie's gonna be great. Everybody says it's great. And I was like, oh, this is just fucking irritating. And you could save every piece of that movie. It's interesting because, I mean, I haven't really thought about Birdman in a while yeah. in any way other than like that time you brought it up a few weeks ago. Sure. And I guess right now. But I didn't hate it. But In Your Read 2 is one of those directors where like, at least everyone who's like seen the uh, his body of work has been burned by at least one of his movies. Of course. Every, yeah. every other movie of his is awful. <laughs> and, then you, and then one of them is like, whoa, it's great. Yeah. It's uh, weird how that guy keeps like building his like cachet back up. Oh, but ba- like Babel, man. Babel. That I, I was, was the one yeah. for me. Yeah. in the theater. I, that was for me. Hated Babel. I liked the um did we see that the, together? Maybe. I like the Leonardo DiCaprio in the in Revenant. The, yes. I like that a lot. Can I tell my Babel story really quickly? Please. It's got nothing to do with anything. Babel. But Babel uh, I went to a preview, sc- preview screening of Babel the day I got hired to work at the Jacob Burns. They had a preview screening that night, and In Your Reach, was there. Mm. And so, movie ends. I fucking hated it. But I was <laughs> like, I was like, cool, In Your Reach, though. Like, yeah. I'll stick around for this, you know. So, he comes out to do this Q&A, and in the audience is Deborah Winger. Mm-hmm. Noted actress, urban cowboy, the lovers, Deborah Winger, right? She's not... In Babel, right? <laughs> and I don't think she's ever worked with Inuri Ju in a movie ever, Nothing right? I can think of. He spies her yeah. from oh, the shit. crowd and goes, Debra, Debra, Debra Winger. And everybody's like, oh, 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 oh. But I'm like, why? Like, what is happening? And he goes, Oh, Debra, you saved my life. And that and well, me, Sean Weiner, and Justin J. Case were all at this screening. I, wow. Yeah, I, I didn't remember you were Justin. I remember oh, Sean was we there. We were all looked at it like, really? What? And and but that was it though. There yes. was no other reference to how what like what the circumstances were, like why his life was in danger. He's just he's just a big fan of Shadowlands. <laughs> I mean, dude, it is a mystery for the ages how she saved his life. She was part of a black ops team that <laughs> was that took it, that got him out of kidnapping. Got him out of kidnapping. <laughs> it told him he to was about to be kidnapping. disappeared, dude. He's going to be one of the oh. fucking Desaparecidos. Oh, and th- Deborah Winger swung in and fucking saved him. I thought he was kidnapped. <laughs> she she, got, <laughs> oh, she get, got him off cold kidnapping cold turkey. You know what's a funny little trivia item from Birdman? Yeah. Is that Michael <laughs> Keaton plays Birdman, and in Spider-Man Homecoming, he plays... The vulture. That is the kind of shit you will find on IMDb, bird. dude. I guarantee you bird. it's there. I guarantee it, you it's, it's something. It's almost certainly there. Right. Uh, next one. Vulture's a bird. Chris Cabin, do it up. No, here it is. Oh, Chris, oh, Eric Siska, excuse me. What are we watching? There you go. Hey, movie haters. Hope you're all doing well. You know what? I'm I'm okay. Yeah, but you're I not great. That's the entire email. Yeah. So we can just now talk about how we're doing. <laughs> With the passing of John Singleton. Fucking tragedy, dude. Man, Trump's still insane. farting around. It's insane. Singleton's in the ground. Oh, Great director. What are you implying? <laughs> anyway, anyway, <laughs> I've had a lot to reflect on today as far as my experiences with his films, whether we're watching Higher Learning in the Theaters in senior year of high school and wondering, is this what college <laughs> is going to be like? You better no. hope not. Yeah, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> we're catching Too Fast, Too Furious on basic cable a couple of years after it came out and realizing that it was a fun popcorn action flick that might have some pretty decent franchise potential. Wow. Well, yeah. Well, like look, uh, look at what, a couple of little psychics there. Your yeah. lips to God's ears, and God made that franchise go on for, I think, God also took Paul years. Walker, though. Mm. That's true. The ninth yeah. one's next year, I think. He gives, wow. and he takes. <laughs> so next year, he'll take another member of the cast. <laughs> <laughs> Try to guess which one. <laughs> Jason Statham. We'll see, you know. <laughs> it's going to happen. That's my de- that's my death pool. Anyway, that's not his letter. Yeah. I will try to find my spot again. Um, but I think most of I think of uh, about Boys in the Hood, his undisputed masterpiece that uh, and one of the decade's best dramas, 
And why the first time I watched it was purely by accident because it was one of the... <laughs> and the cause was one of the biggest laughs I've ever had at a movie. Bah? My family missed the film in theaters. <laughs> Come on, you... I'm gonna go to you. Bring your mom I'm and go see dad. Boys in the hood yeah. with your family. So my <laughs> mom, mid thirties, mine might have. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> my brother, late teens, and I, mid teens, wound up renting it on VHS. If a story of a coming, uh, it's if a story of coming age in South Central Los Angeles seems like a weird film to watch with one's mom, it doesn't because I watched Cruising with my mother. <laughs> it should be noted <laughs> that she's studied. coming of age. <laughs> She studied film since I was a toddler and remains a movie buff to this day. Oh. Tell her about the show. Oh, she hates it. <laughs> <laughs> I still talk to her every so often about my thoughts after I've seen a Coen Brothers, Jim Jarmusch, or Spike Lee film for the first time. So we so we didn't go to this into this movie blind. We knew that we knew that Singleton was considered a brilliant young visionary and within the first two thirds or so the film's running time we came to the same conclusion wow it is a really good movie yeah it is good there was one thing late in the film we got a scene where trey cuba gooding jr has sex with brandy neil long no matter how hip your mom is (laughs) that is the kind of scene (laughs) that no teenager (laughs) wants to share with the room with his parents during disagree (laughs) And she seemed to pick up on that shared awkwardness pretty quickly. Yep. Her solution, which I have to admit seemed like the only practical immediate measure at the time, was to fast forward through the scene. Come on, dude, just let it rest. Yeah, we're already we're already in this. We know it's what's not happening. that long. We know what's happening, dude. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, ma. <laughs> but since VCRs work the way they do, this was this only co- continued to play at this. The sex scene at a much higher playback speed, which meant the two teenage boys got to watch Cuba Gooding Jr.'s sexual you, uh, uh, undulations. Undulations. Well, that's how you spell that. I've always wondered. <laughs> You've never unduled, man? Turned into a <laughs> Benny Hill scene. <laughs> now that guy could undulate. <laughs> My brother and I completely lost our minds with laughter at the sight of the rapid fire humping. <laughs> and I don't think I've ever seen my mom so flustered in her life before or since. Yeah. I suppose it's a testament to the greatness of Singleton's filmmaking that I still came away from the movie. Page turn. <laughs> legitimately moved even after such an immature laughing fit during it. R.I.P. to a legend. Sincerely, Nate. And Nate, thank you for this email. And I'm sure you sent it. A little while ago. Because <laughs> he's been dead a little bit now. He uh, has Just a little dead. bit. Just he little bit. passed in late April. Yeah, it's yeah, all it's relaxed. It's not that you bad. You know, he died. We fast forward. We just got your email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, sex scenes with parents. It's uh, There's two kinds of parents in this world. Parents where that's fine, like Eric's mother mm. and, and wait, Chris wait, Cabin's parents. I would parents. argue too fine. Too fine. And then my parents, which it was like... My mother would leave the room, mm. or my father, the classic, what is this shit? <laughs> and I'm like, Dad, you dig it, dude. My uh, mother <laughs> shut off one movie. Because, and like, sex scenes would come up in movies like- Just straight up shut off, though. Like, yeah, turned off the DVD turned it off. Really? Once. Un time. Uh, it was watching Chasing Amy with her. I don't know why we were doing this. It was my whole the whole family moving out watching Chasing Amy. Wow. Wait, there's a, there's a sex scene in that? There, well, there is, but that's not what it was. I forgot. Um... It was way before that, and it's um, <laughs> it's the scene where uh, Ben Affleck and Joy Lerner Adams are just sitting in the playground, and he's like, they're talking about, you know, how can lesbians have sex? What about penetration? And Joy Lerner Adams does this hand motion. She goes, well, and does that? Yeah. And then, well, that's it. This is, rid- <laughs> oh, this is, you know, this is too much. This is. Wow. It was just, and it wasn't sex, but it was the, the. Yeah. The, it painted a picture. Mr. Smith painted a picture. Oh, pretty clear that my mother picture. did not want to care to look at. Yeah. Sparked so, your imagination. Yeah, it did. Oh, it sparked a lot of things. Yeah. No, that sets you on a track for the rest of your life. <laughs> that's what that was. <laughs> You and several other people in this room. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, all right, so here we go. <clears throat> the Blade Incident. Dear WHM, I would like to regale you with an instance 
you're just telling us a story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> regale. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Go email, you wait, can wait, regale wait, someone wait. in an email. Go back yeah. to the Renaissance Fair. <laughs> <We're>, oh, <laughs> wow. We're yeah. not in a tavern in Middle Earth. You're not going to fucking regale me But with I anything. want to be, so do it so that I can <laughs> pretend. Well, let's see what happens. Maybe you will be regaled. Uh, I would like to regale you all with an instance of pure film cowardice. It involves me as a child seeing the Wesley Snipes classic Blade. Needless to say, this story does not have a happy ending. Much like Blade. Mm. (laughs) Uh, It all began. See, you are being regaled. In the summer of 1998, I was 11 years old, and much like Steven Sadak, I was a bit of a coward when it came to horror movies. (laughs) Right on, dude. Steve Sadak approved. Uh Uh-huh. Was this still going on in 98? Oh, uh, no, not not for Blade. It was. <laughs> it definitely was. I mean, I oh saw the... God, it was. I remember <laughs> seeing Event Horizon and being terrified. Oh, sure. I think that's probably 97 or 99. I'll fill, that's like up. 97. That yeah. sounds 97. I remember, man, that was... That was a great movie to see in the theater at that age. I, I never think. saw. I saw it on fucking really? DVD. Yeah. Oh my god! I'll oh. never forget when that dude's like decompressed in space and his eyes like. Yep. Are we talking to someone? No, I was trying to go on IMDb. Oh, uh, weird. You were trying to go on IMDb and it started talking because he doesn't use the app, dude. Right. He just fucking goes on the website oh, like a no. savage. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. Uh, my dad and I made plans to go see Blade, followed by a trip to the pool. To finish out the day. Wow. Fucking nice day, man. Yeah, that's good. Uh, as we were heading to the movies, my dad kept reiterating that if I got scared, it was okay to leave, giving me an out if things should go bad. Oh, like you're Batman. <laughs> and then you'll become what? Blade Man in the future. Remember Batman and he got scared at the opera? Oh, right. Can we go? Can we go? And it's like, all, all right. right. All right, little, little, little baby. Let's go outside. <laughs> oh, wow. Now we're dead. Because you were too scared to be at the opera. <laughs> Maybe if someone wasn't a stupid baby, I wouldn't be haunting you right now. All I now. know is I wouldn't have been killed at intermission. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been, I would have eaten popcorn. <laughs> hey, <Your> mother- <laughs> Figaro, fuck you! <laughs> Your mother's pearls would be on her neck, not all over the fucking street. <laughs> This guy wouldn't be jerking off on my corpse. <laughs> Gave your mother a pearl necklace. Snyder <sighs> cut, dude. We might as well have seen Excalibur. <laughs> uh, bow, bow, bow. Uh, I told him I could handle it, and we went into the theater. Turns out I couldn't handle it. <laughs> when the lights went down, a minor feeling of anxiety kicked in, but I tried to ride it out. This feeling got progressively worse during the bloodbath scene, but was abated when the scene became more action-oriented. Uh, I was still a bit on edge, and it wasn't much longer when Donald Logue rips out a man's throat that I finally broke. I told my dad we had to leave, and he was like, We have to leave! (laughs) We have to leave! (laughs) He he knew Udo Kier was coming. He's like, I gotta get out of here. Yep, dude, I hear you. (laughs) I fucking hear you, dude. Hello, it's me, Udo Kier. I'm sitting next to you on the plane. Real life vampire. (laughs) We have to leave. Uh, We left the theater and drove to the pool, surprising my mom, brother, and sister... Uh, that we were there so early. Kevin got scared, was all my dad said. (laughs) And it led to some light family ribbing to the point that even after I got older and watched more horror, my dad would constantly bring up what he referred to as the Blade Incident. Thanks for the laughs, both free and on Patreon, Kevin. Well, Kevin, thank you for being a loyal Patreon subscriber. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I get that. Although I started watching horror at a really young age, but I do recall the second film I ever saw in theaters, Ghostbusters 2. Mm. And when Vigo the Carpathian first fucking ducked out of that painting a little bit, I fucking lost it and I hit under the seat. Similarly, the third movie I saw in theaters was Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yep. Dude, he talked like that. Dude, I fucking shat That's trousers. That's still scary. It's to yeah. say, it's still scary. scary. Holy <laughs> shit, dude. Scarier than Insidious. Yeah, it just might be. Uh, not in that direction, because I've told all my scared stories. But Right. Uh, fam- but not the time you were scared straight. <laughs> that still hasn't happened. Uh, <laughs> family jokes at your expense that never go away. There was oh, a- yeah. We were at Sesame Place. There's a picture somewhere in my... <laughs> I think it's gone missing, and everyone now, thinks what, I... What is Sesame Place? Oh, Sesame Place is in Pennsylvania. It's basically like Disney World for Sesame okay. characters. Right, yeah. Uh, Sesame Seeds? Sesame Street. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Sesame We're not Street. impregnating Elmo. <laughs> 
No, we're not. <laughs> I didn't know if it was like a really boring Hershey's or something. No, it's next to Hershey Park or near enough oh, Hershey okay. Park. Yeah, it's close that you know you can make a whole weekend out of it, dude. If you really want to be it's bored, just to tears. a bunch of rides about tahini. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but there was this. It was a three-tiered column, and you know, it was one of those things where like. Uh, Gonzo's hit, not Gonzo. Uh, fucking, I don't know. Uh, Bert's head's here, Jeff. and then Jeff. like Bert's head's here, and right. then Big Bird's body's here, and right. then Ernie's feet are there, and you spin them around. Oh, sure, it disgusting. To so match it's like it up. the end thing monster, but with all the sesame <laughs> characters. No, it's just a little thing for children. It's like a match game. It's a kind little of. Yes. the thing for you know children. what it, you know what it was like. Remember in Super Mario Three yes. when you went to that bonus uh, little mushroom hut. And the image flew by, and oh, you had to like okay. click, click, click what, to match up the picture. So One of Toad's gambling houses he yeah. had. Dude, that guy was a real fucking degenerate. Hey, man. Mario, how's it going? Come on, come on, come on, come on. He's still like that in Mario Odyssey, dude. Yeah. He's like, oh, hey, you want to come over here and race some fucking turtles? <laughs> yeah. What's the vig on this turtle race? <laughs> Just stomp on some of their heads. Leave the other ones alone. Listen, Mario, we need some action. I'll get you some action on this fucking match game. Mario. <laughs> no, so, and that's what the thing was. Yeah. And I remember very clearly, it was five years old, doing it, and me and my brother are both in bathing suits. It's a picture. I did it, and then he fucked it up. Like, uh-huh. And it's a picture of me, and my fucking dad took this picture, <laughs> and I'm screaming <laughs> like Batman on the cover of Death of a Fan, like... <laughs> Tears down my face. No one ever let me forget that picture. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen this photograph. No, I don't, I don't know if it exists anymore. I might have destroyed it in a moment. But oh, the know. archive fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, you kept like, tires in there, dude. <laughs> uh, oh, all right, what do you got? One more? Yeah, that's it. All right, so this is Shrek for P. Shrek for P. Uh oh. Hi, fellas. I'm a big fan of the pro- podcast and a proud Patreon subscriber. Thank you. By the way, Patreon is great. Uh, if you're not on there, patreon.com slash we hate movies. That's right. A ton of great stuff. This month we dropped a Kingsman episode. Yep. Uh, we did another G.I. Joe animation damnation. We've got an in- Independence Day commentary mm-hmm. coming out. Oh, oh yeah. Might as well say, Forrest Gump. It's going to be an episode. Yeah, Forrest Gump in July. Ooh, Patreon just, bonus, man. Just in time. Uh, when I saw you guys did an episode of 2004's blockbuster masterpiece Shrek 2, I had to share my horror story of working at the F- Shrek 4D theme park show. Wow. What? Working <laughs> at. Hold not a just second. a story about attending one time. Nope. Working at. 4D, dude. That means it's not only three-dimensional Shrek, it's time. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> that means. Like you know what that means, dude? You Shrek are Shrek. Forever, it's not dude. time. You no. no longer look like Shrek. You are Shrek. You born no, Shrek. Dude. You born no, Shrek. no, no. Listen, it's even worse. The Shrek virus. It just means you're you. smelling shit. <laughs> yeah. You're smelling Shrek? I bet you it smells stuff. We're going to find out. Uh, I, thought I the worked at Universal was time. Studios for five plus years. Wow. And three of those years uh, at the famous, now, unfortu- now fortunately closed, Shrek 4D. <laughs> Ugh. About six months before we closed, we were running uh, the operation like normal. The operation. And about to close the n- for the night when a very drunk middle-aged man walked into the, onto the, sh- into the show. Oh, my God. Mike, uh, Mike Myers. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Myers wishes he was still middle-aged. One of our positions was to supervise the theater and watch the guests watch the show uh, just to make the guests... Uh, make. Just to make sure the guests don't break the rules. I wish I knew what the 4D thing was, though. I think it's dude time. I think it's time <laughs> stuff. Uh, Maybe sex. I mean, you're it's in a just, bookcase. Because it's like, it's not 3D, like shit's popping out of yeah, you. It's like, it's there. Yeah, you're yeah. Like there. In theaters in Japan, I think, like, you, like, when the wind is blowing a lot, like, they'll put on, like, fans. Well, we what have that here. What are oh, those wretched, oh. wretched what? theaters that I'll never go to? Is that 4D or is that 5D? In Union Square Regal, they yeah. have a 4D theater. That's, That's how oh, I really? saw Mission Impossible Impossible Fallout, right? That was the most and recent yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. They yeah. had a fan going? There's fans. A nuke went off for all real? All in the theater. It got really hot. The seats lift up like you're on a fucking roller coaster. I'm getting fucking douched with water. When, when they T-bone that truck and it falls into the river, when it hits the water, right. pfft, Oh, that's... 
Dude, this dude, mist, you, you know have what? no idea where that water's coming from. That's disgusting. Bleak. And I accidentally bought tickets to it, so I was fucking and it was furious. Like $31 a ticket or something like that. But it's Manhattan theater prices, oh, yeah. so I was like, well, I guess they renovated and I just bought the ticket. <laughs> the timing worked out. Leave it for pornos. That would be a great <laughs> porno theater. Yeah. yeah, that's what I want. Fucking jelly hitting my face. <laughs> yeah, you get sprayed with stuff like warm water to simulate piss. <laughs> Wait, where's this theater? <laughs> They're just vaporizing power glide on you. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, so this is about now the 40s is, Sh- is Shrek sex stuff. Uh, on. One of our positions was to supervise the theater and watch the guests watch the show just to make the, sure the guests don't break the rules. The theater was empty except for a tourist group, a family of five, and one disheveled, very <laughs> drunk man. Uh, yeah, he was. The, n- the lights go down, and I saw the man sitting all the way in the back. You not uh, good. I He's thought to jerk myself, off. Yeah, where else are you gonna jerk gonna off? Gonna that, you can't it. jerk off in the front row. I didn't read ahead. I'm just calling it. I right. thought to myself, he's probably going to pass out, and I'm gonna have to wake him up at the end of the show. About halfway through the show, the man shot up, oh. uns- unzipped his pants. Oh. Yep, yep. He beat the Shrek. <laughs> took out his flaccid dick. Hell yeah, dude! And started to pee all over the floor <laughs> and the seat. Wow, golden shower D. <laughs> then he proceeded to yell. This is for you <laughs> at the screen. <laughs> and that man later went on to be president of the United <laughs> States. <laughs> then he sat back down like nothing happened. I was shocked, but kept my cool and called security. Oh my God. They arrived shortly after the show had concluded. <laughs> I like the Wait, idea. Yeah, like, way to go, security. Like, oh, somebody's pushing in there, but the show's got to go on. <laughs> You're just Look, hearing the slush in the other seats. This is mind. Shrek 4D. <laughs> this is theater. The show must go on. I will not. Interrupt a performance of Shrek 4D. I don't care Cue who's the, getting pissed on. Cue the donkey shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a donkey in Shrek. Uh, uh, they, oh. they arrived shortly after the show had concluded. The other guests in the theater were clearly mortified sure. and had shuffled out as fast as they could. Yep. While security was escorting this man out of the park, I could hear him intensely sobbing. <laughs> I'll never know whom he was talking to. Or why he chose to take a violent piss at the Shrek show. Violent, violent piss. piss. I've been there. <sighs> uh, guess who had to mop up his stinky piss? Oh, Donkey. I hope someone else. Donkey I, had to do it. <laughs> I, uh, I've i seen a lot of shit, literally, while working there. But that image of a sad drunk man yelling at Shrek always bro- uh, has always been burned into my brain. Oh. Uh, what's the craziest story y'all have working at the theater? Keep on shrekking, love, Rose. <laughs> oh, Rose, thank you for being a loyal Patreon subscriber. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I've told this story on the air. A lot of multiplex horror stories, of course. It goes with the territory. The movies are a fucking horrible place. It's a mm. wretched hive of scum and villainy. Uh, one night, it was like a busy Saturday night. We're cleaning theaters. We're in one theater, and uh, we hear this like banging sound. It's like, Where's that banging coming from? And we all kind of like stop, look around, couldn't figure it out, kept cleaning. Went on to the next theater, cleaning the theater, you hear that banging again. Where is this fucking banging coming from? Could not place it. Waiting outside a third theater for it to, to fully, you know, clear out and whatnot. We hear the banging again. And I'm, I don't know if it was me or somebody we were working with realized like, oh, it's coming from like the emergency hallway. Mm. So, like, you know, like, every movie theater has, like, the back hallways you can, like, exit, you know, if there's an emergency. Also, like, they weren't armed with an alarm, so you could just exit that way if you wanted to, right? So, we go down the back hallway, and the banging's getting louder, so, like, you know you're on the right track. (sighs) This is where you cock your gun. (laughs) (laughs) Open the... I'm armed only with a broom, dude. (laughs) Uh, We open this door, and there's an entire family in this stairwell... And this dad is like down at the bottom of the stairs. Yeah, and broom to the face. The family is like up, like sort of huddled by the door. And the guy like yells up and he's like, oh, fucking finally, we've been banging for, you know, however long or whatever yeah. it was. And we're like, all right, well, what are you doing back here? And it was like, well, we saw the exit sign and we thought we could get out, but this door's locked down here. And I go, no, it's not. Like, that's the exit to the parking lot. Yeah. And he marches up and he's like, that door is locked, god damn it, or whatever. And I was like, no, it's not. Yeah. And he says, show me. <laughs> so I walk down these stairs. Uh-huh. 
and push the door open. Yeah. It's totally fine. And I'm like, see, it's not locked. Like the cool (laughs) summer night breeze is blowing on my face. And as I'm like soaking that in, like thinking about, you know, I'm going to be off soon. going to go to Taco Bell and get some food. I'm going to be home watching a movie, just basking in the fucking fatness of Taco Bell. When I hear this guy say, huh, that's funny. I couldn't open that door when I went down there to take a piss. <laughs> I'm standing in a like four by four little <laughs> tiny corner because yeah. the door is right there. So I'm just standing in piss. Yeah. Just yeah. this man's piss. Yeah. It prepared you for the New York subway. Which it did. He yeah. made his family watch him piss. <laughs> now you kids look at this. Yeah. This is what happens when they don't unlock doors. Yes, yeah, so I just fucking stood in yeah, fucking human waste. Disgusting. That guy is uh, gross. The, yeah. my, this wasn't very gross. I mean, emotionally a little gross. Um, this was, I think, my second or third year at the Multiplex. Uh-huh. And I was, Chris Cabin, year three. Yeah. And you pissed back there? I did piss back there a couple <laughs> times, Eric. I got really? back in, though, because I could open the door. Did you really? Yes, of course I did. I default. I, yeah. He was that dad. <laughs> That's me. Um... So I was cleaning the bathroom and just like sweeping up, doing a check and everything like that. But there was one guy in there (laughs) and he was in one of the stalls and he was clearly taking a massive horrid shit. (laughs) It smelled like it. It was just like, no, and like you heard the little uh, noises every once in a while. Yeah, those Uh. pangs of struggle. Uh. He got shadowed, man. He got shadowed hard. He definitely got shadowed, dude. The doctor strikes again. And this must have just been when like cell phone, regular cell phones were becoming a thing. Because uh-huh. he had a cell phone with him. Yeah. And he picked it up. And I don't, he, he says, hey. And I'm like, okay. And like, I'm like, I feel like intrusive already. Yeah. Oh, but, do you, but you didn't initially think this dude was talking to you? I, I was like, kind of. Did like, you hear the phone ring? Yeah. Oh, I heard, okay. I heard a rumble. Like, I think it was on vibrate or something. Um, <laughs> they used to be really hardcore with the vibrate. Yeah, that's back why I think. Uh, so I hear him say, hey, nothing. And then, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And it was clear that he was being broken up with on the phone <laughs> while taking a shit. Dumped while taking a dump, dude. Well, and, like, he, and the thing is, is he Double knew dump. he must have known I was there because he made it very... Sh- like He he was like, I'll, I'll come home. I- I'm going to come home. I'm not going to go to work. I'm coming home. Oh, no. <laughs> it's just like, wow. said, okay, bye. And then like... I was I hid in the stall. I don't, I don't know what this man looks like. Oh, did you pull like a, a, a like you're in a horror movie where you like stand on the toilet so he doesn't know anyone's there? I like I said I won't I didn't do that, but like I backed all the way up so I was like over the where you flush it. Oh, you're straddling yeah. the plumbing. So like he would actually have to look down and look yeah, to yeah, see yeah. me. But he was kicking open each one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's gonna I'm gonna kill anybody who heard me cry. He wow. didn't say another word. Just sobbed on his way out. That's a Violent Amazing. sobbing. That is great. Woo. Sob shitting stories. <laughs> one time, this dude took a dump on one of the seats during a performance of Sea Biscuit. Oh, really? Yeah, what? we just, we put a garbage bag oh, over that seat and left it. That's it. Yep, <laughs> left it for the cleaning staff at the midnight shift. That's it. Weirder no. thing, I think this was a morning like Mission to Mars screening for this guy. <laughs> oh my so god! First of all, you've got diarrhea in the morning, and you're getting broken <laughs> up with in the morning. Yeah. Shit. You better be hungover, man, because having that happen to you and not being hungover, yeah. that just sucks. And it must have been a bad one because it was like, clear, like she had waited for him to leave or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to make the phone call. Wow. The that's, locks have yeah. been changed. <laughs> I'm sorry. Get your ass to Mars. <laughs> oh, my God. Get your ass to divorce court. Uh, well, that is WHM Mailbag uh, for this round. If you want your weird stories read right on the air, uh, or if you have a question for us, write into that mailbag. We all hate movies at gmail.com. Until next time, I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Chris Gavin. Eric Siska. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you're doing. Take it easy. Bye.